This video is sponsored by War Thunder. As Japanese aircraft were attacking the US battleships and facilities at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, across the Pacific, the Imperial Japanese Navy had 10 battleships ready for combat. As the war continued with the United States into the coming years, the Japanese would complete two super battleships, the largest in the world. By the end of the war in September 1945, only one Japanese battleship would remain. All others would fall victim to the US Navy, and in one case, a non-combat loss. This two-episode series will cover the brief histories of each class and each of the frontline Japanese battleships. The five classes consisted of Kongo, Fuzo, Issei, Nagato, and Yamato. I'll note here that there were some older Japanese battleships that were converted as target ships and repair ships used during World War II, but they will not be covered in this video. For this first episode, we will cover the Kongo and Fuzo classes. Have you ever thought of commanding these famous Japanese battleships? If you're into any sort of World War II gaming like me, be sure to try out War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. To make this even better, it's free to play on PC, consoles, and mobile devices. As someone who's played this game for more than 10 years, I can tell you by personal experience, you can command over 2,500 different tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations, starting from vehicles in the 1920s to the jets and main battle tanks of today. As of October 2025, most of the Japanese battleships I'll be talking about are playable in-game. For anyone new to War Thunder, it's easy to pick up. All you need is a mouse and keyboard or a controller. War Thunder also has one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models in gaming, where individual components are susceptible to damage and different armor, shells, and missiles can make a major impact on the damage. Join a worldwide community of over 95 million players and play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, or mobile devices now by using my links in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players to the game on PC and consoles that haven't played in the last six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and seven days of premium account. It's available for a limited time only, so act fast. The Congo class, the oldest of the Japanese battleships in World War II, started life as Japan's only battlecruisers. As HMS Invincible, the world's first battlecruiser, entered service in 1909, Japanese naval planners were already designing an improvement to this new type of ship. Soon after, however, the British designed a new battlecruiser, the Lion class, which would be superior to the still paper Japanese design. In turn, the Japanese reached out to the British to seek aid in the design and building of a battlecruiser. In 1910, Japan signed a contract with the British company Vickers to build an improved Lion class battlecruiser, which would be designed by British naval architect George Thurston. The construction of these four new battlecruisers, the Congo class, was officially authorized in 1911, thanks to the Japanese Emergency Naval Expansion Bill, which would also include one new battleship and four armored cruisers. Congo, the lead ship of this new battlecruiser class, will be the last major Japanese capital ship built outside of Japan. Laid down in January 1911 and put into service in August 1913, Congo came in at around 27,000 tons and was armed with eight 14-inch, 45 caliber British Vickers guns and four twin turrets, 16 6-inch secondary guns, and 8 21-inch submerged torpedo tubes. Armor for the class, as built, consisted of around 6,500 tons, with an 8-inch armor belt below the waterline, 6 inches above the waterline, 9-inch face armor for turrets, and 10 inches of cemented armor for the barbettes. The second ship, Hiei, was constructed in Japan and was completed in August 1914, however, using a large number of parts imported from Britain. The third and fourth ships of the class, Kirishima and Haruna, were both fully built in Japan and used all Japanese parts, both joining the fleet in August 1915. As battlecruisers, the Congo class featured relatively light armor, heavy guns, a long hull at 704 feet, and could hit speeds of almost 28 knots thanks to 36 mixed-fired boilers. During World War I, the ships saw no action and conducted patrols at various locations in the Pacific. After the war, the Congo class was spared from dismantling, as many battleships and battlecruisers worldwide were scrapped due to the 1922 Washington Naval Treaty tonnage limits. During the interwar period, the ships each underwent various small updates, 
However, all Congo-class ships, with the exception of Hiei, would undergo major modernizations twice, with the first period being from 1927 to 1932. The first modernization consisted of adding more than 3,800 tons of armor to improve protection, addition of anti-torpedo bulges, four submerged torpedo tubes would be removed, and the main armament elevation was increased to 43 degrees, helping increase gun range. The ships had their forward funnels removed, as the original 36 boilers were replaced with 16 mixed-fired boilers for Congo and Kirishima, and 10 boilers for Congo. Three float planes were also added on board. Hiei was demilitarized and became a training ship starting in 1929 to meet the limits of the 1930 London Naval Treaty, removing 25 of the 36 boilers, the main armor belt, the aft 14-inch gun turret, and all 6-inch guns. In 1933, the ships started going back to the yards for their second major modernization, and in many eyes, changed their status from battle cruiser to battleship. The changes included rebuilding the sterns and to make the ships 25 feet longer, fitting a new heavy pagoda-style superstructure, adding even more armor, mainly horizontal protection, more torpedo protection, and replacing the machinery again for 11 Kampon oil-fired boilers and new turbines, allowing speeds up to 30 and a half knots. Light and medium anti-aircraft guns was increased, two of the six-inch guns and the last four torpedo tubes were removed, and a catapult was added to turret three to launch the three float planes. In 1937, Hiei was converted back to an active warship, following Japan's withdrawal from the second London Naval Treaty Conference in early 1936. Hiei would be built up to the second modernization standard of the Congo class, though it had a few differences such as a different boiler count and a modified and more modern bridge structure. Hiei's aft 14-inch turret and 14 of the 6-inch guns were re-added, along with a rebuilt-up main armor belt. Battleships Hiei and Kirishima covered the Japanese carriers during the Pearl Harbor attack and continued to cover the carriers in the coming months. Congo and Haruna covered the invasions of Malaya and the Philippines as soon as the war started. The battleships continued to be heavily involved escorting invasion forces or carriers during the first six months of 1942, with Hiei and Kirishima covering the landings in the Dutch East Indies in late February and March, and all four took part in escorting carriers during the Indian Ocean raids in April. All four also took part in the Battle of Midway in June, Congo and Hiei covering the invasion force, and Kirishima and Haruna covering the carrier forces. During the Guadalcanal campaign, Kirishima and Hiei covered the carriers during the Battle of the Eastern Solomons in August. Congo and Haruna took part in bombarding the American-held Henderson Field on Guadalcanal, decimating U.S. forces, planes, and supplies at the airfield. All four took part in the Battle of Santa Cruz in late October. In the early morning hours of November 13th, Kirishima and Hiei closed in on Henderson Field for another bombardment, but were met by a U.S. cruiser and destroyer force, with both sides trading decisive blows. Hiei took most of the brunt of the two battleships, suffering extensive topside damage and some flooding in her steering compartment, causing Hiei to be caught by U.S. aircraft in the morning. Hiei was hit by several bombs and possibly four torpedoes and was scuttled by the crew later in the day, being the first Japanese battleship lost during the war. Right before midnight on November 15th, Kirishima was intercepted off Guadalcanal by two modern U.S. battleships, South Dakota and Washington, with Kirishima heavily damaging South Dakota. The first battleship fight of the Pacific War, Kirishima would quickly succumb to Washington's nine 16 inch guns in the early morning hours of the 15th. From 1943 to mid 1944, Congo and Haruna saw little action. They would sortie with the new super battleship Musashi in mid May 1943 in response to the American invasion of Atu Island in the Alaskan island chain, which was soon called off as the island fell to the Americans. Later in 1943, both would sortie from truck with other Japanese battleships to Wake Island to counter potential U.S. forces, but none were met. On June 19, 1944, both Congo and Haruna were part of the vanguard force escorting carriers during the Battle of the Philippine Sea, where Haruna was hit by four bombs and survived, while Congo escaped without any damage. During the larger Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944, as the Americans were invading Leyte in the Philippines, both battleships were part of the Japanese center force at the battle off Samar. This battle turned out to be a David versus Goliath type brawl, as the Japanese battleship 
cruiser, and destroyer force was against a small U.S. escort carrier and escort force, Taffy 3. These ships were the only force between the Japanese battleships and the invasion beaches of Leyte. Though the American carriers and escorts would hold off the Japanese battleships, cruisers, and destroyers after a daring battle, Congo and Haruna played a large role as they targeted a number of American escort carriers and destroyer escorts during the fight, either sinking or helping sink a few ships, such as Congo getting credit for sinking the destroyer escort Samuel B. Roberts. On November 21st, Congo was transiting back to Japan and would be hit by two submarine torpedoes, causing uncontrollable flooding and eventually capsizing, being the only Japanese battleship sunk by a submarine during the war. Haruna would be moved to a naval base at Kyure at the end of 1944, where it would stay the remainder of its service. In March 1945, during an American carrier raid, Haruna would be damaged by a bomb on its starboard side. In July 1945, Haruna met its fate, coming under attack by American carrier aircraft and U.S. Army bombers, with more than eight bombs sinking the battleship. Haruna would be scrapped in place as it was in shallow water from 1946 to 1948. In 1911, at the same time the Congo-class battlecruisers were authorized from the Emergency Naval Expansion Bill, a new Japanese battleship, the Fuso-class, was also authorized and in the works. As the class was designed, starting off with one ship, Fuso, it was meant to work operationally with the Congo-class battlecruisers while also besting any contemporary battleship designs, such as the American New York and British Royal Navy Iron Duke classes. Featuring 12 14-inch 45 caliber Type 41 guns, the Fuso class had an extremely strong main armament when designed. With the guns laid out in a super-firing pair up front in front of the superstructure, two midline turrets amidships, and a super-firing pair at the stern, the class featured 16 6-inch guns that were placed in casemates, an anti-aircraft armament of four 3-inch guns, and six submerged 21-inch torpedo tubes. The class also featured a mixed firing scheme of 24 boilers, powering a steam turbine system, which could get them to 23 knots. Armor for the class, as built, consisted of around 8,600 tons, with a 12-inch armor belt, 12-inch face armor for turrets, 8 inches for barbettes, and 14 inches for the conning tower. Fuso was laid down in 1912, launched in early 1914, and commissioned in November 1915, whereas the second ship in the class, Yamashiro, authorized soon after Fuso, was laid down in late 1913, launched in 1915, and commissioned in early 1917. These 29,000 ton battleships would see no combat during World War I, with their service consisting of training and patrolling cruises. Notably, these ships would undergo major reconstruction in the 1930s, with Fuso going into the yards from 1930 to 1933, with Yamashiro going into the yards in late 1930 and completed in early 1935. The Fuso-class ships would receive a substantial armor upgrade, adding more than 3,500 tons, with a focus on horizontal protection and improvements to the anti-torpedo protection systems. Along with the armor upgrades, propulsion was a major aspect of the refit, with six Kampon oiled fired boilers replacing the 24 mixed fired boilers and new Kampon turbines, getting the ships up to 25 knots. This was also helped by lengthening the ships 25 feet at the stern. The main guns received the upgrade of increased elevation up to 43 degrees. Secondary armament was slightly changed, removing two of the 16 6-inch guns and increasing their gun elevations as well. The torpedo tubes were removed, and the anti-aircraft guns were upgraded to more modern equipment. Lastly, the superstructures for both ships would be largely altered from as-built, and when they came out of the yards, Fuso and Yamashiro would look very different. The ship's main superstructure would be replaced by large pagoda masts and an increased height of their aft control towers. One exhaust stack would be removed thanks to the reduction of boilers. Onboard aircraft facilities were added to handle three float planes, with a catapult placed on turret three for Fuso and Yamashiro at the stern. Yamashiro's pagoda mass was quite different than Fuso's, also sitting farther back on the ship, prompting the change of the turret storage for turret three to be facing aft instead of facing forwards towards the bow like Fuso. Fuso and Yamashiro spent the first six months of the war in or around Japanese waters, being deployed on their first major combat operation in late May 1942 
as part of the distant covering force during the Battle of Midway in early June, which was also a backup for the Aleutian Island invasion if needed. The ships, not seeing any combat, headed back to Japan and would not be used outside Japanese waters until August 1943, mainly used for training purposes. Fuzo would be used to carry supplies and troops to truck a heavily fortified Japanese stronghold. It would be based here until February 1944, when Fuzo left port to escape a large American naval airstrike on the base. It would be used extensively over the coming months as a training ship in various locations, such as Borneo and the southern Philippine Islands. Yamashiro was also used as a training ship after Midway, where it would also be used to supply truck. In November 1943, on a return trip to Japan from truck, Yamashiro was hit by a submarine torpedo where the ship lucked out as it didn't detonate. In September 1944, both Fuzo and Yamashiro were brought back to frontline service, and in October, they were used as a critical part of the defense of Leyte in the Philippines. As the Americans landed on Leyte in late October, Fuzo and Yamashiro were famously used as one of the three forces with the common goal of destroying the American beachhead. Leading the Japanese southern force, Fuzo and Yamashiro, in company of cruisers and destroyers, would need to navigate Surigao Strait and surprise the American beachheads from the south, along with the center force coming down from the north, which included Congo and Haruna, as mentioned earlier in the episode. A northern diversionary force with Japanese aircraft carriers lured the American carrier fleet away from Leyte. On October 24th, as the two Japanese battleships were on their way to Surigao Strait, American naval aircraft attacked the force, where Fuzo was hit by two bombs. In the early morning hours of October 25th, Fuzo and Yamashiro were ambushed by American torpedo boats and destroyers. Kicking off the Battle of Surigao Strait, one of the battles of the larger Battle of Leyte Gulf. A little after 0300, Fuzo was hit by at least one torpedo, possibly two, where it quickly went ablaze. Shortly before 0400, the fires reached the magazines, blowing the ship apart into two large sections. Very few sailors would survive out of the estimated 1800 crew. Right after Fuzo was originally hit, Yamashiro was hit by a torpedo on the port quarter, causing the rear magazine to be flooded, rendering the most rear two 14-inch turrets useless. Ten minutes later, another torpedo hit Yamashiro amidships, slowing the battleship down, but eventually regaining some speed. As Yamashiro kept heading up the strait, it was met by six older American battleships, West Virginia, Maryland, Mississippi, Tennessee, California, and Pennsylvania. Five of these battleships were sunk or damaged at Pearl Harbor, with three being completely rebuilt since December 1941. Yamashiro soon came under 16-inch and 14-inch gunfire from the American battle line, while also firing back, hitting a few American ships throughout the fight. With hundreds of different types of shells fired from battleships, cruisers, and destroyers, Yamashiro soon went quiet after being battered for nearly 20 minutes, along with multiple torpedo hits. She was struck a final blow from a torpedo from an American destroyer, and Yamashiro would quickly capsize. This would be the last battleship versus battleship fight in history. Of Yamashiro's around 1,600 crew members, only a few survived the ordeal. A big shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. As one of my favorite games I've played over the last 10 years, be sure to check out War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, or on mobile, and use my links in the pinned comment or video description to register. Those of you who are new, or haven't played for 6 months, will also receive a massive bonus pack across PC and console, including multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days a premium account. It's available for a limited time only, so act fast. Thanks for watching episode 1 of the Japanese Battleships of World War II series. Which one of the Imperial Japanese Navy battleships discussed is your favorite or the most interesting to read about? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to be on the lookout for episode 2 coming soon.